So if you watched the last three videos, you should have a better idea of what porosity your hair is. Because in this video, I'm going to compare what high porosity and low porosity hair prefers and go over both of their pros and cons. Let's compare their preferences side by side so you get a better idea of their differences. For high porosity hair types, lifted cuticles makes your hair strands clump together easier to create complicated tangles. It's even worse if your hair is dense and your hair strands are fine. So keeping your hair stretched is a great way to avoid this. Low porosity hair types also benefit a lot from stretching for a different reason. Tight cuticles make hair strands more springy so when a hair strand sheds, it's more likely to jump out and get tangled with another hair strand to create knots. Also, more springy hair strands mean more tight shrinkage. As your hair shrinks, tight textured hair strands loop around one another to create even more knots. So keeping your hair stretched helps you avoid knots altogether. All hair types benefit from real protein treatments, but for length retention, High porosity hair benefits from them the most. Looser cuticles means your hair dries out quicker and it's more prone to breakage. So high porosity hair will always need added reinforcement. Protein binds and coats hair strands to help them hold on to moisture longer than it normally would. On the other hand, low porosity hair types love deep moisturizing treatments. All hair types benefit from deep moisturizing treatments. But for length retention, dense and tight low porosity hair types can't do without them. When I say deep moisturizing treatments, I'm referring to real deep conditioners or herbal hot oil treatments with penetrating ingredients and the use of steam. The steam will help relax the cuticles to allow the treatment to penetrate more. Deeper penetration equals more flexible and softer hair. LOC and LCO are well-known product layering methods for maximum moisture retention. Here's a link to a three-part series I did recently. The first video goes over the actual science of why these methods work. The second video goes over which method is best for your hair type and why. And the third video shows you how to do both methods based on your hair's porosity. These three videos cover everything you need to know on the topic in detail so please take some time to watch them. A great way to help tighten lifted or loose cuticle layers is with liquid-based hair products or spritz with an acetic pH. As long as the pH is within the safe zone, using a spritz with an acetic pH as the liquid step in the LOC or LCO methods will temporarily strengthen your cuticles enough to help them hold on to the products it just absorbed for longer. Also, a quick apple cider vinegar rinse after washing and conditioning your hair is a great way to tighten and strengthen your cuticles after being weakened by the shampoo process. For low porosity hair, using an acetic spritz or an apple cider vinegar rinse on your ends is also very beneficial because your ends are always going to be higher in porosity than the rest of your hair. It's impossible to talk about low porosity hair without mentioning something about clarifying. As explained in this video on low porosity characteristics, tight flat cuticles slow down the absorption rate of products. So products more often than not tend to sit on the surface of your hair. This buildup of residue can make your hair feel stiff or sometimes even gummy. And it makes your hair get dirty faster. So while clarifying is important for all hair types, it should be done more frequently for low porosity hair types. I saved heat for last because it's not for everyone and it's best to wait until you know your hair better before you use it. More so for low porosity hair types that are also dense and have a tight texture, the proper use of heat makes length retention more obtainable. Heat is not for everyone and if you're willing to put in the manual work, it's also possible to retain length without it. Here's an overview of some pros and cons associated with high and low porosity hair types. I know from the recent videos on porosity, it may seem like there's only cons associated with both extreme hair types. 
but high and low porosity hair also definitely have some pros. To start, high porosity hair is easier to stretch compared to low porosity hair. Based on how dense your hair is, you most likely won't need heat to achieve a smooth stretch. Also, products penetrate easily, so if you keep up with your protein treatments, use products with an acetic pH, and seal properly, you should be able to retain moisture for a prolonged time. But on the other hand, low porosity hair tends to be a lot shinier than hair that's high in porosity because its tight cuticles lay flat and reflect light better. It also tends to be a lot stronger and resistant to breakage because its individual hair strands are usually a lot thicker due to its extra cuticle layers. Low porosity hair's tight cuticles protect it from drying out too fast as well. For easier length retention, the medium section of this chart is pretty much the goal for both high and low porosity hair types. Naturally high porosity hair types can only achieve this temporarily through a consistent regimen that constantly reinforces your cuticles. And low porosity hair types have to master how to slowly and gradually increase their porosity over time without causing too much damage. Hopefully with all this information on how to tell if your hair is high or low in porosity from these two videos and comparing what each hair type prefers as well as their pros and cons from this video, I hope by now you have enough tools to build an effective and customized healthy hair regimen. For the rest of you who may still feel a little confused and feel like you don't really fit into the high porosity range or the low porosity range, stay tuned to the next video on how to tell if your hair is medium in porosity. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.